All right, section 1310 is on gas stoichiometry, which is really similar to the other stoichiometry that we covered before, only this time what we're going to do is look at it in relationship to the gas laws. So a couple things you need to know is that at STP, which is standard temperature and pressure, the number of moles per liter of any ideal gas is 22.4. So one mole of gas at STP is going to take up 22.4 liters of uh, volume. Non-STP, we're going to use ideal gas law to calculate it first. If it's not at STP, um, the given liters of gas, we're going to start with the ideal gas law, and when, the, when we're looking for the liters of gas, we're going to start with a conversion with stoichiometry. So let's start with this question. What volume of CO2 forms from 5.25 grams of CaCO3 at 103 kPa and 25 degrees Celsius? So just like before, you always start with a um, balanced chemical reaction. So let's back up and start there. So like I said, we need to start off with a balanced chemical reaction. The subscripts, of course, are larger than they should be. We're just going to not have to worry about that. Um, we're going to write down the information we have underneath the reactants and products that we have. So it wants to know what volume of CO2. So I'm going to put X equals how many liters uh, form from... 5.25 grams of CaCO3 at 103 kPa and 25 degrees Celsius. So we have um, grams, we have pressure, and we have temperature. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, look at a relationship between the CaCO3 and CO2 as far as how many moles can be produced. Because remember that our uh, pertinent formula, PV equals NRT, needs to include pressure, volume, moles, temperature, and R, and one of these missing. So in this case, we have everything we need to be able to calculate this, except for number of moles, which we can get. And over here, what we need is to find the number of liters. So we're going to need to be able to fill in everything except for the volume on this side. So let's start by taking uh, CaCO3 and changing it to moles. So 5.25 grams times, and we're going to take the molar mass of CaCO3. All right, let's change colors to yellow. Okay, so we have uh, 5.25 grams of CaCO3. We know that one mole, if you add up the molar mass of CaCO3, is about 100 grams. That's going to change the number of moles to 0 0.0525 moles of CaCO3. At this point, if we had a different coefficient here and here, we would set up the multiple ratio and calculate the number of moles of CO2. In this case, we don't need to do that because it's balanced at 1 and 1. So if we had this many moles of CaCO3, then the number of moles of carbon dioxide would need to be the same to be produced as the, react as the product. All right, so we know that this information didn't change. That's the same. So our temperature is going to be um, 273 plus 25, which is going to be uh, 298 Kelvin. We know that our um, pressure is going to be 103 kPa. We have to convert that to atmospheres to be able to use the R value, which is going to be 0 0.08206. We do the conversion to atmospheres. There's 101.3 kPa's in one atmosphere. This pressure is going to be 101, or let's say 102 atmospheres, 1.02 atmospheres. And then we're going to take this and plug it into the pregnant formula, given everything except for liters. So our pressure is 1.02 atm. We want to know volume, our number of moles, 0.0525 moles. Our our value is uh, 0.08206, and our temperature is 298 Kelvin. So we solve for V in this case. You put that in your calculator, and you should get 1.07 liters for your final answer. So it's not much different than regular stoichiometry. We had to do the multiple ratio to get from grams here to moles over here in order to put it into this formula, but that's what you have to remember is the extra step. So we do the stoichiometry portion, and then we just plug that into the ideal gas law to solve for whatever variable that we don't have. So let's look at another example. Let's take a look at another example of 
gas stoichiometry. How many grams of Al2O3? So I want to put this down here. Um, I'm going to say how many grams. Well, are formed from 15 liters of oxygen at 97.3 kPa and 21 degrees Celsius. All right, so again, we know that in order to find grams over here, I'm going to have to do a multiple ratio between oxygen and the aluminum oxide that we have over here. The only problem is I don't know how many moles of oxygen I have. But this actually tells me how many moles of oxygen I have because I have enough information to use the Perbnert formula to find out how many moles of oxygen are um, held at this condition. So if we look at this and say, look, we have temperature, we have pressure, we have volume. And what I really need to know is the number of moles in order to do the ratio between oxygen and aluminum oxide. So that's what we're going to do is use the Perbnert formula to find out how many moles we have of oxygen. Okay, so after doing a conversion from KPAs to atmospheres and from Celsius to Kelvin, we're going to use the PV equals NRT formula or Perbnert. And we're going to fill in what we have and solve for the number of moles. So our pressure is at 0.96 atm. Our volume is at 15 liters. Number of moles times R, which is 0 0.08. 206, and that would be um, able to cancel with liters, atmospheres, and Kelvin. And our temperature in Kelvin is 294 Kelvin. So once we do the simple algebra, we're going to multiply both sides and then divide by uh, what N is multiplied by and get our final answer. And if I've done the math correctly, we should end up with 0.597 moles of O2. Now it's time to go to the stoichiometry portion. So now that we have the number of moles of O2, I need to know how many moles of Al2O3 would be produced. And what we're going to do is our multimole ratio. So we do um, O2 and compare it to Al2O3. Our uh, balanced reaction is three oxygen produce two aluminum oxide. What we have from the problem is 0.597, and that's going to be, we didn't need the extra equals in there, and uh, we want to know the number of moles here, so we're going to cross multiply and solve for x. So x ends up being 0 0.398 uh, moles of Al2O3, and we don't want moles, we want grams, so we're going to take 0 0.398 moles of Al2O3, find the molar mass for aluminum oxide and change it to grams. Our molar mass is um, 101.96 grams over one mole. We multiply that times 0.398. We end up with 40.58 grams of Al2O3 that's produced from this reaction. So if you notice, um, it's nothing different than we've done before with stoichiometry. It's just getting some of the information. We may have to use the gas laws in order to get that.